Druid is in a bit of disbalance currently, as most of his skill set is pretty redundant overall, or has little to no late game scaling despite all the recent buffs and nerfs, with the exception of course of Earth and Werber skills, both of which scale incredibly well with some of the strongest scaling mechanics in the game, namely crit damage and overpower. Using the two in combination allows for two main build paths, Earthwork Pulverize and Trample Slide. Today, I'll get into the strengths and weaknesses of both, as well as general guidelines in terms of what's worth playing. Keep in mind, this isn't a one-size-fits-all kind of approach, rather, a deeper dive into the outbear potential, and how I leveled 4 druids in the past couple days. Without further ado, let's get started. There's two main reasons to play bear currently. Number one, the only skills scaling damage efficiently are Pulverize and Landslide, both of them having two dedicated aspects each with plenty others scaling earth damage. As for number two, it's the easy access to defensives and the ability to turn those into more damage, namely Fortify. Total armor and Werber and percentage damage reduction are also present, and with an easy access. Meaning that whenever you'll be playing either Trample Slide or Earthburn Pulverize, you have easy access to damage and defense alike. Which leads me to my next point. The strengths and weaknesses of the builds. The main strengths of the builds are high AoE damage, access to overpower and crit damage scaling, amazing defensive layers and simple to execute playstyle. However, they aren't without any weaknesses. Both builds lack in mobility, at least initially till you get to invest into movement speed, with Trample Slide technically being faster due to resetting your Trample cooldown, however a lot of backtracking is necessary to play it properly. There are lots of aspects to use, and with very limited amount of slots you can have, you are often forced to choose between multiple beneficial outcomes. Lack of innate source of vulnerable, and Storm Strike just isn't enough in the case of Trample Slide. As for the differences between the two builds, Trample Slide is faster and requires less to be able to perform well enough, meaning that it's oftentimes the better early game option. Pulverize is slower, but hits harder, is a lot more consistent, and doesn't rely on RNG nearly to the same extent as Trample Slide, and has significantly stronger defensives, gaining full benefit of total armor and wear performs that. For that reason, if your goal is to level a Druid, I'd aim for Trample Slide build first, as Druids usually level with Companions and Landslide anyway. And once you have both Insatiable Fury and Vasily's Prayer, transition to Pulverize instead. For leveling, you can obviously play with anything you'd like, but as with everything in life, there's a better way to do it. Personally, I found Companions and Landslide to be the best early game leveling build, providing with a rolling 20 second dash cooldown to kill most things, and it also offers a smooth transition into Trample Slide once you drop Aspect of the Trample Dirt and Aspect of the Aftershock. I personally like to swap to Pulverize as soon as I get Insatiable Fury, Vasily's Prayer and Shockwave Aspect as well as ranks to Pulverize on Gloves. You're capable of getting at least plus 6 your Pulverize on top of other scaling, allowing it to deal with most of the content you will be facing at that point. However, if your goal is to transition as efficiently as possible, I would wait instead until you've acquired enough Paragon points to get to the first Glyph and slot an Exploit Glyph together with 25 points into decks for the vulnerable status on hit which will greatly increase your tier speed. On the subject of tier speed, I want to address a speedrunning variant I found a lot of success with lately, running double movement speed roll on boots with evade speed reduction on head, paired with movement speed roll on amulet, will allow us to move surprisingly fast despite the class being innately slow. One thing that takes it to the next level is using Aspect of the Mending Stone, paired with Ghostwalker Aspect, allowing us to move extremely quickly whenever we press Earth and Bulwark. We can take it a step further, since we will be running Grizzly Rage anyway, which grants us unstoppable during its entire duration, we will be slotting Aspect of the Rampaging Werebeast onto our weapon, which at max roll grants us an extra 10 seconds of our ultimate. We'll be looking to pair it with Calamity and Calm Before the Storm Spirit Boons, guaranteeing as long of a duration as possible while lowering the downtime. Now, because we have an idea in mind, we can now focus our gear around it, looking for sources of Lucky Head, wherever we can, on top of obvious damage additions such as crit damage, vulnerable damage and overpower damage. As well as ranks to pulverize, wherever available, on top of as much movement speed as we can physically stack. We will also be using Mother's Embrace over one of the damage roll aspects to smooth out our clear speed and minimize left click usage. Which brings me to my next point on flexibility of the specs. Whether you're looking to create a speedrunning build, or something that can tank any hit on hardcore, you have the ability to move your aspects around to suit your playstyle accordingly. For instance, a aforementioned Ghostwalker aspect might be present in a speedrunning variant over Ballistic aspect or aspect of Quicksand, and a Mother's Embrace ring instead of Crashstone aspect for the smoother resource generation while clearing. In the case of hardcore, for a build that is tanky enough to never die, 
you'll need to slot an aspect of disobedience on your neck, meaning that your shockwave aspect will land on your weapon, and Grizzly Rage most likely be moved to ring instead, meaning you'll have to drop Crash Stun Aspect or Aspect of Retaliation, which usually go there. Similarly, if you want to be really sure of your character's survival, opting to use Bolster over Calamity may be a smart option. Moving on to gearing priorities, we'll be looking for the following, in order of importance. Max roll of ranks to pulverize or landslide, lucky hit chance, crit damage, attack speed, crit chance, or up to 5% chance to restore percentage primary resource, with crit damage, attack speed, and crit chance being interchangeable. For pants, while injured, your potions grant very implicit roll, total armor while in Werber form, total armor, percentage damage reduction roll, percentage damage reduction while healthy, percentage damage reduction while injured, willpower, or any missing stat for the glyphs, usually intelligence. And with the damage reduction rolls being interchangeable, if necessary, but ideally, you'd like a percentage damage reduction roll on top of the conditional one, unless you really need the stat increase. For boots, you'd want to roll tax reduce evades cooldown implicit roll. I'd say this is mandatory, but nothing's stopping you from being you, you silly goose. Percentage movement speed roll, percentage movement speed for 4 seconds after killing an elite, percentage fortified generation, any stat roll, percentage shrine buff duration, or percentage spirit cost reduction. For weapon, you'd like to have main stat, as it's the highest available source of main stat you can find anywhere in the game. Percentage critical strike damage, percentage vulnerable damage, and percentage overpower damage. With percentage damage to distant enemies for AoE, and close enemies for single target, in case any of the above are lacking. For totem, if you want to run with a one-hander, up to 5% chance to restore percentage primary resource. Main stat, percentage cooldown reduction, percentage lucky hit chance, percentage crit chance, percentage damage reduction while fortified. Moving on with the amulet, having a plethora of options. For the amulet, you would like percentage cooldown reduction, percentage movement speed, percentage willpower, percentage earth skill damage, percentage wearer skill damage, or percentage damage while shapeshifted, percentage total armor as wearer, percentage total armor, plus to any ranks of the relevant damage passive percentage damage reduction while fortified, or percentage damage reduction flat. And for the rings, you'd like to have lucky hit chance, crit damage, crit chance, vulnerable damage, or overpower damage. As per the premise of the video, you are quite flexible in regards to your choices, depending on your playstyle, access to paragons, and so on. I will add links to all the relevant build guides to the description below, however, if you're looking for a Paragon board guide specifically, do leave a comment telling me what you would like to know, and I'll happily make a video about Paragon boards specifically, as it's too much information to talk about as a chapter in a video of this format. I hope you enjoyed the video, and with that being said, Aranetius 